I guess we begin. Well, first of all, I really want to thank both Law and Alejandro uh, for all their enthusiasm, all their support, all the wonderful food, uh, all the all the discussions and the goings and, and comings we had, uh, arguing about uh, this piece in a very good way. Um, I would like to thank all of you for, for being here, thank you. Um, I should also mention that I'm, I'm indebted to, to the work that Michel Sourya uh, has done on Bataille. He wrote a, a wonderful biography, and in this biography he, he hid a lot of clues will hopefully uh, help me today to, to accomplish what I'm trying to do. Um, as a visual artist who has just very recently entered academia, uh, thanks to the, the doctorate program of visual arts of the University of Hasselt in Belgium, I find myself looking for uh, the conceptual apparatus and the language for engaging with, uh, with my, uh, my topic of research, which is uh, the sacred in all its irrepressible dimensions. And it also seems to me uh, of great importance, uh, both personally and for reasons of intellectual rigor, to acknowledge the, the triumphs and trials of those who came before us. Um, I admire your style a great deal, and I see him as a role model for my own intellectual search. I know it may seem a little bit old-fashioned uh, in these times of the discourse with all these hierarchical notions and uh, con constant deconstruction uh, to bring back from the dead such hierarchical and oppressive notions as the authority of a master. Um, but I am, in the end, a follower of the old ways. And I require an idol. Here today, I shall attempt to Someone, George Bataille, in all his dark lucidity, and in doing so, incorporate his obscene vitality into my own practice to absorb all his passion and mad desire. And uh, we can start the video presentation. So, who is George Bataille? How to trace his figure when he has searched for the formless, what he called the heterogeneous? It would be idiotic to call him a writer or even worse, a poet when he built his texts as a slaughterhouse for language. Even calling him a visionary is nothing short of ridiculous, because he wanted to descend into blind godhood. He is a fading presence at the edge of the abyss. He is the most sacred of desecrators. He is a character who was both uh, feared and mocked in his own time. And today his thought is just as scandalous and contagious 
perhaps even more so today. We consume without fear and fool ourselves into thinking that by doing so we impose our will over the earth. But what is all this effort for? What sort of joy do the piles of money, the real estate empires, and the whispers of the stock exchange ever bring? We all die, and we all rot. No one saw as clear as that time the extent to which we have blinded ourselves, how there is a whole half, a dark double of our systems that powers them, unseen and unknown. It is this hidden twin that, when given its dues, can open up the only space for total radical freedom. It is expenditure, loss, uh, that gives us our true humanity. Before reaching the main topic of this lecture, which is a speculation on the activities of the secret society founded by Bataille, and known as Acephal, which in French means without head, I would like to do a small tour through a specific work of his, the accursed chair. By going over the way in which Bataille elaborated on the concepts of expenditure and consumption, and how these concepts were integrated into an overarching system, it will allow us to conceive not only of uh, what went behind those closed doors of the secret society, but also the reasons behind it, behind their activities, uh, the animating forces to such excretions. In the accursed share, Bataille vividly describes the effervescence of life. There is the sun that, uh, through its own constant nuclear annihilations, always gives without ever receiving something back. It is the ultimate sacrifice. The radiant echoes of said colossal explosions travel through empty space and reach our lonely planet. And in the only very thin layer of the Earth where life is actually able to exist, this solar energy is received, devoured, and then becomes matter. Living beings eat each other and in doing so alternate between these two states of matter and energy. Indeed, for Bataille, there are no borders or breaks between them. Rather, they are all part of continuity. Animals are like water in water. They know of no separation between them or any separation to their environment. When possible, this energy received from the sun is accumulated, which brings growth. Indeed, every millimeter of the earth that is capable of sustaining life is already occupied. Hence, growth is not infinite, 
but it is confined to the limits of the earth. It is only death that ensures movement and change, momentarily uh, clearing patches which are then immediately taken over by life again. Yes, the number of individual species may grow or diminish, but the total biomass remains constant. Once growth is not possible anymore because there is no space, then this accumulated energy must find other ways of being expanded. Luxury and complexity emerge. Life uh, twists itself into infinite shapes from the chromatic caprices of the peacock and his feathers to this growing tumor that we like to call the human brain. And even more, inside this brain of ours, through all its incessant production of meanings and symbols, Indeed, all human activity must follow the principles that animate all life. Through work, humanity transforms the world, turning organic and inorganic matter alike into energy and then into matter and so on. Um, and it is the mastery of inorganic matter that grants humanity a source of uh, previously untapped energy. But, despite what ideological delirium would have us believe, growth, be it biological or technological, has always a limit. It is finite. Thus, the spending of this accumulated energy, which cannot be employed for growth anymore, cannot be employed for utilitarian means, uh, it can only be temporarily postponed. This problem, this is the eternal residual that is our burden, uh, that gives the title to the work, the Accords Share. Luxurious wars, murder, and festive carnivals, they are all um, exterminations of purpose. They all answer the call and take up our accumulations, give them back into the world and our peers as violent gifts. In this book, Bataille examines different historical human societies and um, the ways they chose to deal with, with this course, with this problem. Of all his examples, the one that stands in all its terrible truth and transforming power is the economical model of whom I call the wise ones, uh, my ancestors, the, the Aztecs. They, like Bataille, understood that reason only knows how to slave all it touches. Everything and everyone become tools to our ends, to our means. Means to our ends. Um, cheap utilitarianism degrades all living beings. It uh, robs them of their divinity and casts them down into the profane. Only sacrifice. Only, sac only sacrifice can restore. All this sacrifice can bring us back into the sacred. To consume and to be consumed without limit reveals my intimate self to those who witness this destruction of mine. In these moments, the abyss between beings momentarily is denied. 
Later, we shall go through this with a more um, concrete approach. But for now, let us be swallowed by the acephal. In April of 1936, George Bataille founds acephal, which will take the shape of both a public journal and a secret society. As a ruler, as an idol guiding them, there stands a headless man, sacrificial knife and burning fire in hand, gods out, a lecherous skull traded for his dick. Of the journal, we know everything. All articles and contributors, it's a distinguished list of individuals. A group of writers, artists, intellectuals struggling with the rise of fascism in Europe. <coughs> but of the secret society, we have been intently kept in ignorance. All the members that Vatile had gathered, they all sworn a vow of silence and secrecy. <coughs> so, what is this group? What were its practices and rituals? What was its ultimate goal? And was this goal accomplished? Public information is very scarce about this subject. Even the exact member, uh, the exact number of members and their identity is a bit uncertain. And um, yeah, they, there are a couple of statements and recollections from people who were close to a tight circle, uh, but who were not members of Acefal themselves. But to believe, to believe them and to believe these loud lies, instead of listening to the, to the fertile silences, it's, it's the ultimate foolishness. After all, what is occultism if not the revelation that skillfully conceals and its twin, the arrogant concealment that brings revelation. Biographers and academics have looked at both the vows of silence and the few open statements and they have taken them at face value. They have believed what was revealed, and they have also assumed that because nothing was spoken, nothing was said. But a lot was said. Not directly, of course, not when, when talking about the cephal, but in all the allusions, all the, all the befores and afters. In all those moments uh, where things were not supposed to be related or relevant or taken seriously. It's, um, it's like hiding in, in plain sight. It's, it's, it's the best disguise. Actually. These intellectuals have been distracted by the typical hand tricks of the magician. They have been cheated by the ramblings of the street illusionists who talk loud and fast so that you don't hear the loud working noises of the hidden machinery. They always, these intellectuals, they, they pretended to go along with all these tricks and lies because they were too scared to look behind the curtain because they sensed the, the 
formless, sacred menace that was awaiting. They, they, they heard the whispers, but they shut their ears. It's like they plucked out their eyes, their dead and gray eyes, instead of daring, daring to see. The journal as a file, and what Mathiel wrote in it, have always been strangely taken in separately, decoupled from the goings on of the secret society. Because this publication had adopted a respectable face, because, like a mimetic hunter, it morphed into harmless shapes imitating the typical intellectual discourses of the times. It was taken to be just one more of them, but it was like a parody of a journal. Did not Bataille warn us as early, in the, as early as in the Solar Anus, and I quote here, the world is purely parodic. In other words, that each thing seen is the parody of another or is the same thing in a deceptive form. Thus, thus we must read this publication like one reads the organs of beasts and birds in a, in a divinatory fashion. Um, a haruspex text, if you will. To be swallowed by the eternal instant that was a cephal, we must look, like Janus, to both the past and the future. We must listen to the gaps between the words. We must listen to the shining images and icons spilling from the ink like dead bodies. Only then can we understand the total incompleteness of Battalion thought and how it condensed at the sacrificial ritual. Battalion begins his inaugural article, The Sacred Conspiracy, by declaring, and I quote, a war against the civilized world dominated by profit and work, the value of reason and the exclusion of ecstasy. End of quote. The, the head must roll, devoured in one single bite by the <coughs> gathering storms. The body, all its other organs, they conspire to expel this head. To excrete this decrepit king, this damn and rotting brain. But, but here I find myself again trapped like everybody else, like just following this poetical and literal explanatory interpretations. And I cannot even claim that Batal did not warn me. In the same article. Yeah, in the same article he writes. Um, <coughs> what we have started must not be confused with anything else. Cannot be limited to the expression of a thought and still less to what is rightly considered art. End of quote. Let us follow these words and be buried in the corpse. What has been... Considered literature and poetry must be unrest. And the nakedness of this, of its magical nature, must become defiant of seeing what has been considered 
thought must become action, as it, as it always was. Bataille, George, he, he compels us to love. He compels us to love to, to the point of death, to dance in fanatism. And, well, co consumed by, by this fever, we, we, we begin to doubt. We begin to doubt the, the existence of the world. And we begin to realize that those who are too weak or, or too scared to, to doubt must be left behind or purged. Because outside the head, there is no God and there is no crime and evil and innocence are the same thing. The, 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 the headless man, he, 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 he eats us. He devours us, and, and, and we, we become him. We, we, we discover ourselves as uh, we discover ourselves as, as holy monsters. What sort of monsters? Well, um, there is what liquid of the serpent skin, decapitated. Blood flowing out like twin snakes. Terrible. <laughs> terrible water. But today we will give you a new heart for your necklace. There is a Plaza Teotl, also known as uh, Marie, Simone, Dirty, Eduarda, Infinite Shitter and Eater of Shit. Like the father, the blind father, revealed to George the child, pissing himself. It is 1936, and Bataille writes his last lines for the secret <coughs> conspiracy, and Andre Masson traces as a phallic idol. And when he's writing this, outside there's a dog, and the dog barks in the night. And Bataille takes the time to write this down in the article. A very seemingly uh, irrelevant detail, but of course, of course it was Jolotl, God as a dog, deformed and sick, twin, twin sacrificer and victim. It's 1927 and Bataille is screaming that he is the son, the Yesuv, that he's the blind parody of the black son. He's begging to, to have his throat cut as he's violating a woman. But tonight we bring destruction to him. In our shared delirium, he comes to us. So now it's the time to doubt. So doubt all you can. The air monsters, they, they call for sacrifice. Everything, everything, everything calls for the, the death that ravages us. It is death that nurtures all human bonds. It is the knowledge of and fear towards death that gives birth to all human communities. It is the promise of death which has brought us here today. It was, it was sacrificial death that moved the headless secret society to action as the world seemed to be fading and destroying itself. George uses acephal, and by that I mean the respectable facade, the journal, to call for death. To call for death so that all can be renewed and not withered away. Against the promised, glorious, 
utilitarian death of the fascist regimes. He opposes the uh, death of this possession of laws, of laying waste to everything inside, against all goals, against all hope, against all sense. At Acefal, his hidden secret society, our dear George could do no less. Again, what do we know? What do we know? We know of Uchaolin and the torture of the 100 pieces. We know of the potlatch. We know. We know they wouldn't even shake hands with the fucking anti Semites. We know they celebrated religiously the beheading of Louis XVI, the death of God at the Place de la Concorde. We know of daily culinary rituals. And I will not mention the monkey because it's all lies what they say they did to this thing. Because, I mean, who would waste such summoning power in such a stupid beast? We know! We know of the thunderstruck tree and how they burn sulfur. The, the group, the group gathered around the tree in silence and meditated. And they were not allowed to talk to each other about it even then, later, ever. Those were the, the orders of Atai, like a mad architect. And they, they, they followed them without question. <laughs> they didn't know what it did to him. And they didn't know what it has done to him. <laughs> we know, and, and that's all we need to know. Because the rest, what is, what is truly important, it's unknowable. The, the thunderbolt. The thunderbolt pilots all things. The eye exposed to the to the flaming fervescence of the sun. It is, it is not an, it's not an object of understanding. Fire in the house, the rats hanging by their tails. The thunderbolt, the thunderbolt, I don't think. And we know that. And because we know, how could we fall for this farce? Attempted sacrifice? Attempted? <clears throat> and then, this old, frail man, no longer laughing, or crawling at the whorehouse. Are we really to believe that this was still a tile? That he grew old and pale and then died and was buried in a cemetery in 62? No, 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 no. No. George, my God, the cardinal. He entered the instant, and he never came out again. Submerged in all elements. He told us, he gave us a clue. He said that the earth spins, and because the earth spins, it makes animals fornicate, and because we fuck, and we fuck, then the earth moves. It's a series of mechanical movements that transform each other and into each other. <coughs> and then, the most important part, he said so, he said so. Through the use of this magically valued combination, one can determine the present position of man in the midst of elements. So yeah, you, 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 you fuck the earth, you fuck it deeply, next to the thunder truck tree, and and you bring him forth. The lovely saint of the abyss, the, the abomination of God, George.
yeah, he still looks old. I mean, it's been what, like 50 years, but no rod, no decomposition. <laughs> But I help. I will help him, and he will help me. Uh, I need him. He can make me strong, and we can be together. Anyway, enough of all this rambling. Now we start. I have been called, I have been summoned, I have been vomited by the earth, and now I lay here, captured, awaiting, aroused. Death comes to be in a, in a weak shape. Hungered, starved, what can you eat? My sorcerer's apprentice. Oh. The brain is a parody of the equator. The brain is a parody of the equator. The brain is the parody of the equator. I am, I am the Jesuv, I am the anus and the sun, I am the fucker, fucker of the night. My intestine, my labyrinth, you take it. My intestine, my labyrinth, the serpent, it embraces you. Like a vulture. You take my liver. Too many fires I have stolen. I am a Promethean doll in your claws. Yeah. I 
I've always been a pig. my pig's heart. Take it. Take it all in. Be my whore. I am joy! I am joy! Before death! I am joy! Before death that carries me! Before death that hurts me down! I reach! I reach the depth of worlds! I am devoured by death! <laughs> thank you! Thank you for helping me! Thank you! Ha 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 ha!